Well, you play the wicked stepmother, and the uh, and you, uh, the first question I ask is, well, why is she wicked? I mean, no one is purely evil. Everyone's got a motivation, um, and because it's a story about a girl who is quintessentially, essentially beautiful and kind and good, um, and has to find the courage within her to sort of overcome her circumstances. The stepmother sits in relief of that and that she is the sort of the perversion of what happens to someone when, when the good is perverted, it t often turns wicked. So I was interested in exploring what makes someone ugly or, or wicked. And even though a lot of the an initial getting to know you um, with Lady Tremaine, who I play, and the stepdaughters is done sort of through montage and, and voiceover. Through those little tiny vignettes, uh, you hopefully begin to get a glimpse of the fact that this is a woman who's tried to start her life again and becomes intensely jealous of the, um, the deep affection that her new husband has for his daughter, who is Cinderella. And once he dies and the financial pressures and the... Um, the, the, the panic and that jealousy grow and that that is what makes her uh, wicked, is that she's, she's not young and not as beautiful and not as kind and not as good as Cinderella and that, that in a way Cinderella becomes her nemesis and, um, you know, to, to horrible ends. It's fantastic. It's really, um, you know, it was so much fun to be had and also because you're collaborating with people like Ken and like um, Dante Peretti and um, Sandy Powell and Moeg Ross and Kay Giorgio, who did hair and makeup. Um, so you're all collaborating on creating these extraordinary visuals. And when you're given a silhouette like that, this, that say that Sandy uh, created, um, and we tried to sort of make it a hybrid, almost like it was a period film told in the 1940s, like a 1940s version of period, then you have to rise to that um, silhouette so it gives you so much um, and the, what I think what Ken was able to or interested in finding was that storybook theatricality but with a, you know the core of truth he didn't want he didn't want to go for the high camp um, which you can absolutely do in a fairy tale he wanted to make it also quiet and true so it was a balancing act trying to find those two things but also inhabit the silhouette it was great fun when the prince and Cinderella began to dance when um, when Richard and Lily took the floor. It was really hard because obviously my character has to be suspicious and judgmental and profoundly jealous. It made me just want to weep because here were these two young people who had worked so hard and so long in this dance and I know what it's like to dance in a corset and Lily was so, I mean, she, she literally was carrying around a whole merry-go-round with her but they were so graceful and so true and um, and they kept the focus on one another. It was, I mean, I don't think there was a dry eye in the room. It was really, really moving. It's like when you go and see Billy Elliot on, on stage. Those boys can absolutely do what the character says they can do. And, and so you are transported by the actor's ability. And so those two young people moving around with this really complicated, beautiful dance that that um, that Rob Ashford had had choreographed, it was profoundly moving, and uh, you know it was one of those moments where you thought this has ab absolutely sort of superseded my expectations. Ken has great comic timing, and he's incredibly great with um, with directorial details, like coming in and finessing something. And he's also very um, open, being an actor himself and such a great um, actor. He's, he's very good at, um, at using the rehearsal time in the morning because oftentimes, you know, you'll come on and, and every actor has a different process and a different way of getting into the role. And so he's able to incorporate everyone's process and make it feel like it's a collective effort. Um, and it's a behemoth, you know, the legacy of, of, you know, this being a Disney classic in cartoon form and a classic in a fairy tale sense. There's such a, an expectation. And he was able to find this way where the tone of the film is, at, as, it, as it once 
um, sweet and delightful, but also um, sinister. And he was able to get the harness the domestic moments between people um, and characters, and also the really grand moments. I think he knows he's got an inherent and wonderful sense of rhythm um, as a director. I'm a great lover of fairy tales. I grew up on them, and um, you know I read them constantly to my children, even though I've got three boys, you know, I've still read them Cinderella and Beauty and the Beast and Snow White. I think I love fairy tales and Cinderella in particular because they deal with really complex um, issues that face children, but, and, but often in um, quite confronting ways. And so many stories that children get told now I think are always trying to avoid sadness, avoid conflict, make them feel like they're their hero um, that doesn't necessarily, you know, they, they can overcome anything and the world is a perfect place. And the great thing about, you know, those wonderful old timeless fairy tales like Cinderella is that they say that the world can be a nasty place out there and you need a lot of courage and you need a lot of resilience and, um, and you will fall down before you stand up. Um, and I think they're all the things that happened to Cinderella. And there's so many, I have three boys, so many films out there <laughs> at the moment that have male superheroes um, at the fore. And this is really a story where kindness is a superpower. And that's something that Ken talked about um, really early on and I found that really, really exciting. And it's a female-centric story. And, um, and I was really excited to be part of the telling of that. The first time I walked onto the set, even before it was lit, um, I, I was gobsmacked. I mean, I had to pick my jaw off off the floor. And then to see what Sandy did with the costumes, it was really like an MGM Technicolor moment. It was, I, f I felt like I was transp transported back um, in, term um, in terms of cinema. And so that was a wonderful um, storybook world to, to enter. And as soon as Lily came on, She's like a breath of fresh air. She's totally unaffected. She's like a glass of water. She's, she allows you in, but gives so much back. Um, and there was, you could just, there's a generosity of spirit to her um, as a performer, which I think is um, really rare and an incredible discipline and um, focus and depth. Um, but she's also such a blithe spirit. So I think she's absolutely perfect for the role, she glows. I think it's a complete experience and I've really fully realised that when we filmed the ball sequence. You just don't see that. You don't see those grand, romantic moments where you say, yes! There was a moment with all the extras, there's a couple of beautiful, really difficult lifts that, um, that Richard and, and, and Lily did in the dance. And Everyone just erupted into applause naturally when, when it happened because it was so beautiful. And I think because you're, you're really genuinely rooting for her. And you don't, I, I, a couple of the times when we were, I mean obviously we all know the story, but we all know the story of Hamlet. But we go and see Hamlet over and over again because you want to think maybe this time he will kill Claudius. And the best possible production of Hamlet makes you think that. And there were several scenes that we shot where I thought maybe she's not going to, maybe, you know, she's not going to find the courage to, to, to bite back at this, at this woman. Or, and, and so I've, I was really surprised by a lot of the scenes. And I think because it's so true, um, uh, and therefore truly funny and truly tragic, uh, I think people are going to feel that they're being told the story for the first time. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, yeah. Is that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!